together, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, reading. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. May God bless the reading of his word. Now here is this question, a few questions about this tree of life. Now first one is, why did God put the tree of life, uh, why did God put the tree of good and evil in the garden? All right, is it to tempt Adam and Eve? Is it to tempt Adam and Eve? So now there is verse 9, can we read Genesis chapter 2 verse 9 reading? Genesis 2, 9 reading. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now we know that in the garden, all right, garden of Eden, there were two, there were well, many trees, but two specific one name, all right? Tree of life, tree of life, and then there is the tree of um, knowledge of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, these two were specifically singled out, and we know that God told Adam very specifically, "You cannot partake of this. The day that you partake from this tree, well, the Bible says, thou shalt surely die." Means you have heard this many times, "Thou shalt surely die." In Hebrew, is to die you will die, all right? means it's a very strong, the strongest emphasis, to die, you will die, all right? You will surely die. Now, of course, this death um, it refers to three kinds of death um, that we can think of from the scriptures. Well, number one, spiritual death, all right? Spiritual death. So, spiritual death doesn't mean you disappear, correct? Um, um, after you die. Spiritual death means you will end up in hell forever and ever. Then there is physical death, all right? Man was not meant to die physically. Because of sin, the body will, be, will suffer the effects of sin. So man will die physically. So please remember that sin has uh, caused the death of the physical body as well, all right? And then there is, of course, the eternal death, all right? The eternal death, the second death. Eternally, forever and ever, body and soul will come together, the Bible tells us. Then you'll be in the lake of fire forever and ever, so please know that, all right? The sequence is, if you're not a believer, you die. God says you will die, means spiritually, your spirit will end up in hell, all right? Will end up in hell, all right? Your body is buried, all right? But the Bible tells us in Revelation that God will resurrect your body if you're an unbeliever. Believers will be resurrected before that. Unbeliever, God will resurrect your body, and your body and your spirit, your body and your spirit, they will come together and you will be body and spirit judged by God at the great white throne judgment. And after that, you'll be thrown into what is the Bible described the lake of fire. Hell and all these people will be thrown into the lake of fire. So it's terrible suffering here, but here you will physically be there, physically suffering as well, and you cannot die again, all right, because you're dead, but yet not dead, all right? living dead, so to speak. So God says, Adam, if you eat of this tree, now, you will experience death. Spiritual death, physical death, all right, eternal death. So that is how the Bible describes death to be. So God warned Adam and Eve, because this person asked, now, why did God put these trees there? What are they for? Okay? And this person said, is it to tempt Adam and Eve? But yet the Bible says that God does not tempt anyone, right? God does not tempt anyone. Um, you turn, turn to, well, keep a bookmark here, turn to James, turn to James. So I'm explaining all this because I, I'm going to ask you, all right? James chapter 1, let's read verse 13 together. James chapter 1, verse 13. 
reading, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So here, this person asks, well, but God says he does not tempt any man. Now, this person obviously understands. Now, why, why, what's the whole story around here, right? So young ones, I hope you understand this has to do with your salvation. Now, when God told Adam, the man, his commandment, remember we've been studying BBK commandment, God's law is simply what God says. God is the supreme authority. So what God says is law. Not that this tree has any intrinsic um, value in it. Um, you eat of it. Um, something bad happens to you. It's a simple um, definition of sin. Sin is disobedience to God. All right, that is what it is. So now, they were under probation. Probation. So our first father and a great, 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 great grandfather and mother, all right? We all come from Adam and Eve. God created Adam and Eve, and from there, mankind developed, okay? So mankind came about. So probation. What is this probation for? Now, God says, if you obey me, if you obey me, that's called the covenant of works. That was a covenant. You obey by works. What I tell you, now, I make a covenant with you. You will live forever. But you will disobey me, then you will die forever. Now, we all have a soul, right? So young ones, please remember, after you die, where will your soul go? What happened to us? Why do we end up in hell? Now, Adam then taught Eve, all right? Adam then taught Eve what to do, what not to do. Now, we know that Satan appeared and tempted Eve, all right? Satan appeared in the form of a serpent and told Eve, well, it is all right. You know, it's fine to eat of this tree. In fact, you eat, you will have knowledge. You will become like God, all right? You have knowledge. That's a good thing, right? Um, and, it's, and it's very nice, okay? So Eve partake of it, partook of it, and Adam listened to Eve, and Adam followed, all right? Now, from then on, they became physically, spiritually, and would have been eternally forever lost. Now, this was a probation. God is saying that, now, if you obey, if Adam and Eve obeyed, then they will be permanently sealed as perfect. At this point of time, they were perfect. In a sense, they can obey God perfectly, or they can choose to disobey God. So, at this time, what will be the future of men was dependent on what Adam and Eve would choose. Now, if Adam chose to obey God, then he would be body and soul in a state where, well, like what we know, the glorious body, right? Perfection. He will not sin again. He will not fall sick. He will just live forever and ever in perfection physically and spiritually, right? Now, Eve chose to disobey and Adam chose to follow Eve. As a result, all that are born after them, well, we inherit, right, the original sin. That's why we became sinner. So this is a probation. If Adam and Eve followed, then they will be permanently sealed. Because they did not, then this is what happened. Well, then how to be saved? Now, we know that in Genesis, look at Genesis chapter 3. I know we just covered this in BBK, Genesis chapter 3. All right, look at, let's read verse 15 together. Genesis 3, 15, reading. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall be, bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now, what, here, what happened here is, now God immediately preached the gospel to Adam and Eve. They have fallen. So God says, you can never obey me perfectly anymore. The covenant of works is over. That is why the Christian must never think the Old Testament saints are saved by obeying the law. No one could obey the law anymore because anyone that is born of Adam and Eve now have the original sin. We are no longer perfect. So God immediately said, there will be the seed. He told them, Jesus Christ will come. All right, Jesus Christ will come. And the seed will be his son. And he will bruise the serpent's head. Means he will destroy the work of Satan. All right, but Satan will... Uh, Satan will um, bruise his heel, 
Satan can't do anything severe to Christ. So now with that, he, he killed and God killed an animal, clothed them in the animal skin, symbolizing to Adam and Eve, from now onwards, an uh, innocent one will die for you. All right? Until then, until Christ come, you must always remember the sacrifice of the animal is to tell you, one day, my son, Jesus Christ, will come and be the sacrifice for your sins. So every time they sacrifice the animal, they will remember. They will be looking forward to, by faith, for Christ's coming, and, grow, and they put their faith in Christ. Today, Christ has come. We put our faith in Jesus Christ's finished work for us. We cannot obey God to be saved anymore. All right? Covenant of works ended in Genesis chapter 3. A covenant of grace. Covenant of grace began. All right? So that is how we are saved, saved by grace. We put our faith in the work of Jesus Christ. They put off their faith in the work of Jesus Christ to come. Ours that he has done and finished. All right, so this was a probation. So to answer the first question, why did God put the tree of, of, good and e of knowledge of good and evil in the garden? Now it's to tell them, this is disobedience. Disobedience is sin. That is why God put it there. Right? That was their probation. Now this is a test. Okay? So, the person asked this, but, but I thought God does not tempt anyone. Because, you see, the fact that God put it there is tempting. God put it there to tempt Adam and Eve. Let me tempt you and see which one you will choose. All right. So, how can God tempt people when God says that in, first, uh, in James that um, God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man? Why does God say that when God did this? So, now I ask, so does God tempt people? Because he put this here. Okay? Now, maybe I'll ask um, uh, Josiah. Is God tempting Adam and Eve? Can't avoid it, right? Because it's evil. Is, is something there? Is God tempting them? Tough one. <laughs> okay. Caleb. Caleb's eyes are so open. So why? <gasps> yes, Caleb. If God is tempting them, then he will have told them, you're, you're definitely going to die. Is God tempting I don't understand your statement. How is God tempting them if they are going to die if they eat it? Okay, this is a very profound <laughs> statement. All right? Very profound statement. All right? It's absolutely accurate. All right? But it's very profound. How is God tempting them when they were going to eat it and they were going to die? That's what you say, is it? Okay. Do you understand what it means? Maybe I'll ask... Uh, ask uh, right. uh, Natasha is looking upwards like, oh, what is that voice saying? <laughs> what does it mean? So I shall not ask you. Maybe I'll ask um, Jennifer, what does it mean? All right? God already warned them. All right? God already warned them. And it is their choice to disobey God. That's what you're saying, is it? All right? So, yeah, it's, it's close to what we are saying. Now, if they are the one who choose to do it, then it is they themselves tempting themselves. Now, please remember this tree in itself is not evil. The fruit is not evil, all right? Um, it's disobedience that is evil. Maybe we turn, all right, we turn, uh, maybe we look at, we've read it, right? Now, please understand the words. Please understand the words. I'll come back to what uh, both the young person say. Let's understand the word tempt. Now, the Bible uses the word tempt, which is the English word translated from the Greek word, for example, or Hebrew word. Now, especially the Greek word, um, the word tempt can mean many things, all right? You have to understand we are talking about language here. All right? Now, one, it can have an evil connotation. All right? Intentionally making you sin. That is tempt. Satan does that. Satan will bring sin to you and, and tempt you with it. Bring sinful things to you and tempt you. All right? 
tempt you to disobey God. So that's the evil connotation to this word, this Greek word, tempt. Okay? Now, but there is also um, other meanings to it. And the context will tell you what it means. Now, please turn with me, all right? Please turn with me to James chapter 1 again. All right? James chapter 1, verse 2. James chapter 1, verse 2. Shall we read together quickly? James 1, 2. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Now, here is that word again, right? Being tempted with temptations. Now, can God be talking about, well, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations? Means, means it's like telling you, go, go to wicked places, look at sinful things, and count it all joy that you're being tempted. It cannot be, all right? Now, look at 1 Peter. Let's turn to the next book, 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. First Peter, chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. Let's read together. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Verse 7. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth. Though it be tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and honour and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now we know the context of these chapters. The Christians, these words, now they also mean trials. Trials. It also means tribulations. All right? It also means testings. It also means proving. All right? To prove you, to test you. So the Greek word has a range of meanings. The context will tell you what the word means, which, which particular usage. Right? Just like I always use the same example, the word drugs right, can mean contraband drugs, can also mean Panadol, right? things that are not contraband drugs. The only way you know what this word drug means is by the whole statement and the context of the conversation, right? So, it's the same. The word tempt has that same meaning. It can mean ev either evil tempting. It can also mean other things. Now, so, now we turn to um, James, right? Turn back to James. Chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. James chapter 1, 12 to 14. Now, blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Now, then you will know this would likely, would most be pointing to trials, testing, tribulations, correct? correct? Now, for when he is tried, because here God says he is tried, this is, has to do with proving you, testing you, helping you, all right? Like students, the teacher say, we are going to have a test tomorrow. This is to, well, to test you, to prove you, to try you, all right? Whether you have, you have developed the knowledge, okay? So, then he shall receive a crown of life. Now, then we have also, but then God says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Now, God gives the context. The second kind of tempting, which is tempted with evil. Now, look up here. Now, then this word, tempt, is used with this context, evil. God says, God will never tempt people with evil. That is what God says. But when God says, when you are going through trials, tribulation, tempt, testings and all that. You can, all right, so now this is the deep statement that was made. Huh? You can, when God gives you trials, you can choose to allow yourself to be tempted to sin against God. I say that again. You, when you're going through what God tests you, you can Yourself, because God says here, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When every man, every man is tempted when he's drawn, drawn away with his own lust and enticed. So you are the one who choose to think about or to want to do something sinful, evil. So you tempt yourself. God never tempt you with evil. This is a probation. Was God testing them? God was testing them. Was God testing them with evil thing to sin? No. When God was testing them, God was testing them, right? Probation. 
But when they were going through it, Satan brought evil temptation and Eve succumbed herself. She saw that it was good for fruit, um, uh, pleasant to the eyes, and would make one wise. She made those decisions herself. That is why the Bible explains, every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. So the verse 14 of, first of James, verse 14 of James will be, every man is tempted. Now, this will be the evil temptation. You choose to tempt yourself with evil things. You're drawn away from your own lust. It's out of your lust. Maybe I'll give you an illustration, not perfect illustration, all right? Not perfect illustration to solidify the profound statement, right? Now, your teacher tells you, we are going to have a test in school, okay? And then you go for the test. But during the test, which is good for you, meant for your good, to help you remember things, make you revise, and then um, solidify your understanding. If you make a mistake, you learn, all right? So a test that is designed out of a good intention with no intention to make you sin, all right? Then you're taking the test. Now, when you're taking the test, you remember, you remember, hey, hang on, I stored the answers on my handphone, all right? And then you slowly take your handphone out and then look at it. You are tempting yourself. You are choosing to turn something that is good because of your own lust. You decide to tempt yourself with evil and you sin. The test is not evil. God did not tempt them with evil. So the profound statement simply means this. When man chooses to sin, whatever he faces and calls it temptation, it is his own lust. It's not God putting lust before you to tempt you with lust. Understand? First James, uh, James chapter 1. Total silence. Phoebe, do you understand? You have to say you understand. All right. Maybe I ask, um, ask the older ones. All right. Jan maybe I ask uh, Janelle. You understand? I explain in return. All right, so God, God's test is good intention and there's no sin in this. Like the school, they designed the test, there's no sin in it, right? But they will tell you, do not cheat. Is telling you not to cheat tempting you to sin? No, it is what they tell you, right? But you will be drawn away by your own lust. So it's always your fault. So when, when the philosopher said that how can God be tempting them when they chose to sin? When they chose to die? I choose to die. I choose to sin. It's you choose. You chose. All right? So it's always man's choice to sin. That's what exactly Adam and Eve did. All right? Now, you know, you know what's the best way to catch a student cheating with handphone? You know how, right, teachers? When the test is happening at night or in a, in a hall, all right? in an enclosed hall, so everybody do the test, right? One teacher was very smart, okay? Just when the test was going on in the heat of the middle of it all, or very short of time, there was a sudden blackout. She went to turn off the lights, and then you only see one student with light coming up from between his thighs. <laughs> the handphone was there, right? Smart, right? Well, we are not encouraging you to do that. Okay, so, so she turned off the light then, oh, suddenly, the students said, why, teacher, why do you turn off the light? To find out who is cheating, right? The handphone light came on. Now, so it is you who chose. They will tell you, don't cheat. They are not tempting you to sin. All right, so the probation was that. So I hope I've answered this question. Now, the person asked next, would Adam and Eve be able to eat from the tree of life? Well, we answer that later on, all right? But God did say, you can eat of every tree in the garden. All right? God did say that. But to answer that, we need to answer another question that someone submitted. Now, what is the tree of life? Why, why did God say the tree of life allows men to live forever once consumed from it? Now, turn to Genesis again. So this person is asking this. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. 
today is quite long, right? So I'm not going to ask you too many questions. I know it's not as fun for me. <laughs> All right. Um, Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. Let's read 22 together. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Now, so this person asks, now, what is the tree of life? Why did God say if man um, eat of the tree of life, he will live forever and ever? Then the third part of the question, does live forever means that the tree of life will lengthen life forever? If man continuously consume fruits from the tree of life. All right, so this person is basically asking this. Hope you follow. He said, now, there is this tree of life, right? God said, this tree of life. Now, I don't know what fruit, all right, we say. Now, so this person say, now, what is this tree? God said that it allows me, if you eat from it, you, have, you will live forever. Then does it mean you must keep eating? All right, Monday eat, Tuesday eat, Wednesday, every day eat. And as long as you keep eating, now, number one, you eat, your life will lengthen. Lengthen. Now, I think I know where uh, we get this idea from. You know, even before I was saved, there are many movies, all right, before I was, I watch this movie, many movies, and don't watch them. All right? The idea is that there is a tree of life somewhere. All right? Then we'll say, well, find these people, go and find the tree of life in this jungle, that jungle, and then they finally find it, and they will fight over it, and then when you find it and you eat, well, from a young person, suddenly you grow old. Uh, if, from an old person, <laughs> right, sorry, old person, then you eat it, oh, then the face changes, then they turn young. All right? Then they keep it, and then they keep eating, and then they will never die. So the person say lengthen the life. All right? So maybe this person used to watch all this as well. I hope you're not watching it now. Right? And then there is like the elixir of life. All right? Something, some, something somewhere where, where if you find it, you eat it, you will live forever. Because God says right now, look at verse 23. Let's read 23 together. Therefore, the Lord God sent for him forth, sent forth him from, from, from him the garden of Eden, Till, to till the ground. So he said, chase him out. Then look at verse 24. Let's read 24 together. So he drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. So you see, so this person must have read all this and say, oh, now then, there is, then they are guarded you know, by angels. All right, I don't like to draw angels, but angel. Then it's flaming sword, you know, flaming sword. Then no man was allowed to enter this part of the garden to eat. All right, so you want to find that garden somewhere? All right, go on, a, go on an expedition, find this garden. You find this garden, you manage to defeat this angel, all right? You can go in and eat from this and then you will have eternal life. Now, is that what God is saying? Okay, people make movies out of this. Now, it's all a wrong understanding. All right? Now, what is the tree of life? Very good question. Now, first and foremost, God says there are two trees. All right? Two trees. Now, we know that knowledge of good and evil, you must not partake from it. Now, this one, you know, you can partake of it. But God barred people, when people fell, God barred people from taking it. Okay? What is the tree of life? Now, the tree of life symbolizes a few things. That's why remember, it symbolizes. It's not a magical tree that we need to go and find it and if we find it, we will have magical powers of not dying and not aging. It's a symbolic thing. All right? Just like the tree of knowledge of evil, good and evil is symbolic. It symbolizes obedience or disobedience. That is what it symbolizes. All right? Obedience, life. Disobedience, death. Okay, so it's symbolic of, of a believer's obedience, symbolic of believer's obedience, all right? Symbolic of, obe of believer's faith. God, you say don't, I have faith, that if I obey you, I'll live forever, then I will not partake of it, of the tr tr good, uh, tree of knowledge of good and evil. So it's their faith, their obedience, and eternal life. Fixed state, all right? Fixed state. Now, if Adam, if Adam partook of the, um, or rather, if Adam obeyed God and did not partake of this, he will pass his probation, all right? Now, if Adam were to do that, he will be sealed permanently, perfect body and soul. Perfect body and soul, all right? Perfect body and soul. Then Adam would 
now be allowed to partake of this tree. All right? So, to choose this tree is to reject this. It's about obedience. It's also about faith, to believe in what God says. All right? And if God, he believed in what God says and obeyed it, he will have eternal life and symbolically, he can partake of this tree. Understand that, all right? So this tree is to symbolize that. Don't waste your time looking for this tree, okay? It's to symbolize that. So when God barred Adam and Eve to partake of this, all right, it's to symbolize to them, now you are barred from this. But, but, but then, but I thought, you say, but I thought Adam and Eve, well, they believed, they believed in God and then they chose to let God to clothe them with the animal skin means they accept salvation by, by grace. Now, then if they are saved, why can't they partake of this tree? Are you totally lost? I'm like talking to myself. Now, if Adam and Eve did accept God's plan of salvation, which we know they did, then why is it that God did not allow them to partake of this tree? God barred them from it. Because this barring occur after God preached the gospel to them, right? Now why? And after God clothed them, now why? Are you totally lost? All right, I ask, I ask Cornelius, all right? Cornelius, you're going to university, so you should be very smart. <laughs> no, you're not smart. For one time, you're very happy, teens happy to say they are not smart because you don't know answer the question. Try. I'm teasing you, all right? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a symbol of obedience, faith, and eternal life. But if Adam and Eve have already believed, then why can't they partake of it? Say again, it symbolizes what? Perfection. The tree symbolizes perfection. Well, how it? Your, your children are all very deep, you know? <laughs> Both of them. Yes, it is. That's what it means, all right? Perfection. All right, this... Now, if Adam obeyed God from the beginning, he can partake because he will be immediately sealed as perfect body and soul. But because they, he did not, he was saved by grace, Correct? So he wasn't still perfect. He still needed to wait for the day of resurrection to get the perfect body, correct? You're following, right? Because one day, Adam and Eve, because they're believers, they'll be raised together with us if we are dead then. Body and soul, the Bible in Philippians and Thessalonians tells us we will receive the glorious body, the body like Christ. So this is the perfect, glorious body. The body and soul that God intended from the beginning if men obeyed them. But men did not, so need to wait. Until now, we are saved by grace. We are imperfect here. Am I right? We are imperfect. All right? What we partake of now is what? The, for them, the Passover, and us, the Holy Communion. Correct? We partake of this. Symbols. Sacrament symbols. This was the sacrament symbol of perfection. Sacrament symbols now while we are imperfect. Now, how do we know that for sure? Please turn to the book of Revelation. Okay, we have only have four more minutes. Please turn to the book of Revelation. Now, do you know that this tree of life is mentioned again? Okay? Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. Let's read verse 7 together. Revelation chapter 2, verse 7. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat ah, of the tree of life, which is the midst of the paradise of God. So now we discover that the tree of life still exists. The tree of life is in the midst of the paradise of God, somewhere, heaven, all right? It is there. It is still there. But God says it is those that overcome, means they have trusted in the Lord, they never denied him, all right? They are the truly sealed um, believers. When they get to heaven, all right, one day, when they have the glorious body, the perfection of the body and soul, they will be allowed, maybe i use another color. 
All right? They will be allowed to partake of this because we would have the perfect body and soul. Now, if you, if one day when we are in heaven, right, this is after the glorious resurrection of the bodies of believers. Now, Revelation um, chapter uh, 22, verse 14. Let's read together. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter into the gates into the city. Now, we know that at this point, there's only believers, all right? Where there's no sun needed um, to shine by day or moon by night, all right? And the existence of only believers in heaven. That is why this is a perfect state, all right? So like what... Um, Cornelius rightly pointed out, this is the state of perfection and we can partake of it then. Now we are in state of imperfection is these sacraments, understand? So God intended in the beginning, if they pass probation, perfect body and soul sealed, they would be able to partake of it. They chose to reject this and they chose to take this. So they fell and God had to save them by, save them by covenant of grace. We are still imperfect now. All right, so to answer this person, this, this is the tree of life. It is not something special. It's symbolic. Um, so this person, please understand, it is not you, you go and find it and you keep eating it and then you keep living. This is like salvation. At salvation, when we believe in God genuinely, we ask God to forgive us of our sins, to save us. Now, we don't have to keep getting saved again and again. Right? We are saved permanently. We partake of the um, Holy Communion. You don't have to say, well, if I don't partake of the Holy Communion, I lose my salvation. It is not like that. Right? But this is different. In a, in a perfect state, well, it's the sacramental um, um, symbol. By that time, we eat it when we are perfect. We don't have to keep eating it in order to be perfect. We don't have to keep eating the, past, the Holy Communion to be, to be saved. Then, same. We don't have to keep eating it to extend our life. All right, so lesson, do not go look for this tree. Number two, lesson is, well, we must be very grateful. There's no way we can partake of this tree of life if not for Christ coming to die for us. All right, so we must live lives that are worthy of saved people, that reflect Him, not the world. Okay, so I hope that this um, helped you to understand the tree of life and, and therefore be, make sure that you are safe. All right? The third one is, please be sure you are safe. Taking the Holy Communion doesn't save you. Make sure you are safe. Let us turn to God in prayer. What do we have here? Top five reasons why church dropouts, uh, what church dropouts say, why they stop attending church. Now, please remember 66% of, well, I take the American view, um, they are the most readily available results. They stop attending church at least a year after turning 18. So from,